There are a few different models that companies will use to structure their data teams and how to actually partner them with the business and get the most value out of them. The common models are the centralized model, the deployed model, and the diffused model, or maybe you might think of this as no model at all. First, let's look at the centralized model. In this example, you have a centralized data group. Now, this group handles all the requests from all the different teams. A request comes in, they process it, they send it back. Another team comes up, they want something, you send it back, and so on and so forth. So all the requests come into a single queue and they are handled by the data team using kind of different methodologies and different ways of prioritizing and then they get back individually to each team. This would be where you're essentially separated from the other groups. This is a traditional way that data teams are organized because they were thought of as kind of like an IT group, not necessarily a business group. So this model is disconnected from the business teams. They don't physically sit together. They may never even see them face to face. The requests may come in from someone they've never even heard of because it just goes through a ticketing system or an email or however you set it up. Then the other thing is that this works well though if you have a smaller team because with a smaller group of data folks, you won't have enough people to actually spread them out and really assign them to each different team. So in a smaller group earlier on, this may make sense. Now the challenge of course is project selection because inevitably some requests that come in are less important than others. And so as a team, you have to come up with a method in a way to decide which ones are more important and that can lead to other teams becoming upset because their work just basically never bubbles to the top. And there are ways to figure that out and later in the course we'll go into user requirements and how to prioritize things. But right now, just these are the key points behind the centralized model. Next, we have the deployed model. In this scenario, each team has its own dedicated analyst group or data science group. So each team, as you can see the different colors here, have essentially their own little data pod, as I like to call them, an engineer, a scientist, an analyst assigned to them, so that when they make requests, they just go direct to them and then they come right back. It's a much quicker response time and those teams develop great domain expertise. And in fact, the key main points of this model, the deployed model, is that first you'll actually sit with the team. So you'll feel like you're a part of the sales group or the marketing group or finance or what have you. And you often will be accountable to that business unit, which is good and bad. In one way you can celebrate the successes, but you also have to suffer through the failures and learn from your mistakes. This is what really builds that domain expertise and makes you an incredibly valuable part of the team. And this is also a very efficient model. However, you'll need a lot of people to do this. Just imagine if you have a data organization and you need one or two or maybe five people per other department. Well, you're going to have a dozen other departments, so you're going to need a whole lot of data people dedicated to these other groups. So this is kind of an ideal model, but not one that every team or company can really uh, handle and staff from the get-go. This brings us to the diffused model or the non-model. But essentially, in this model, there is no central data team. The business groups have their own analysts that they hire independent of one another. They are fully embedded. There is essentially no centralized model and there's no representation at the C level or any of that kind of stuff. The analysts just work directly for the different business units, which may be nice for the business units because they have kind of full autonomy there, but it poses some other challenges for the company. So some key points behind this model is that they are fully embedded. You literally will work for a sales manager or market manager or whomever not be a part of a bigger group and you won't really have much of a path forward this is a challenge that I've seen firsthand where teams hired analysts in the get-go but then those analysts were stuck on those teams and unless you wanted to go into marketing or sales or finance or HR you really didn't have a path forward there was no kind of data career path for you using this model also one of the challenges here is that it lacks standards so as companies grow what will happen with this model is each team will find their own desired tool or way of developing their analysis and in, in figuring out the results. And so you may have 
lots of different overlap between your tool sets, between your platforms. You may have conflicting things. It can be a real challenge at scale. It's not one that I really think will be tenable in the long run for an organization. Now, when it comes to how these things evolve, there are a number of ways that can happen. And typically it starts with a sort of grassroots effort, either a team or maybe someone in a specific department hires an analyst or maybe has an idea that, hey, we need to do more than this. And so they start getting these folks on their team. Maybe they even just train up someone that's on the group to help figure these things out. And they kind of become the de facto analyst. This happens more often than not. Then eventually the effect of that will bubble up a little bit and the managers, directors of those different teams will find value in it and they'll start bringing it up to their peers and at some point someone will realize hey you know there's a whole thing out there called data analysis data science business intelligence data warehousing there's all these names around this common idea of a formal structure an organization so at this point possibly they're hiring a few folks in that realm and then eventually what will happen is you'll need a senior leader you'll need someone to come in that actually can structure this thing and, and shape it from top to bottom and figure out exactly the stuff I just showed you. What is the right org structure? What tools, what platforms, what standards are you going to use? How are you going to interact with teams? How are you going to develop solutions? How are you going to monitor the effectiveness? So this is where it's really helpful if in an early stage, before you get too formal, before you have too many tool sets or too many people doing different things, you bring in a senior leader to help shape that from the ground up. I've been fortunate enough to do that at several occasions in my career, and it is a delight when you can come in at the ground level and you're given sort of carte blanche in terms of how to build things. And I can just tell you from firsthand experience, it is incredible the results you get when you are able to come in without too much formality or too much structure or too many competing priorities. And just like there are a number of ways that this group can evolve, there are a equally great number of ways that it can be structured. An engineering group that has a director, a manager, and then engineers, possibly supervisors, possibly tech leads, architects, all kinds of different roles falling in this data eng or data engineering group. Then using the results of the data engineering team are the data analytics group. This is the director, managers, data analysts, and of course the data scientists also in this similar vein. So I like to think of these as three distinct groups that make up the data organization within a company. So depending how you structure it, maybe science and engineering are all under the same group, or maybe engineering is separate as part of a software team. There are lots of different ways, but to me, this is the ideal structure where essentially you have all the component parts you need to be effective and turn that raw information into something really valuable for a business. Now, I've worked in various different forms of this group, and I have to say that the deployed model is my favorite. And the reason is in the deployed model, you will be partnered with a business unit and you'll be able to act and feel just like one of those folks on that team and then also have a huge impact on their business. But you can then be switched to another team down the road. Let's say you don't like it anymore or just for the sake of cross training and you get to learn about how every aspect of the business goes. This, this makes you a very well-rounded business person. Then as you grow in your career and want to become a manager or director or maybe even switch over to a different role, you can do so because you are a part of a centralized data organization. So you are getting all the benefits of being deployed and working directly with a team. However, you as a data person still have a path forward. And now that you know how these bits work and how the team may be structured that you're working on, let's go into a deeper look at how to actually work with customers. I hope that lesson was helpful to you. If you want to learn more and continue this journey, head over to freethedataacademy.com slash YT to see our entire catalog and sign up for a seven-day free trial so you can start learning today to elevate your career tomorrow.